Now we move on to harnessing the power of the diode and uh, see what we can do to create a crude DC source here by using the characteristics of the diode and create a diode rectifier. So because of the ability to conduct current in only one direction and block current in the other direction, diodes are used in circuits called rectifiers that convert AC voltage into DC voltage crude DC voltage as you're going to see here. Rectifiers are found in all DC power supplies that operate from a voltage, an AC voltage source. So we're going to start with the half wave rectifier. So if you look in your text at figure 1622, let's see if I can scroll forward to that. There's 1622. You can see the depiction here of the operation of a half wave rectifier. So there's the simple circuit. We can see on the input we've got a sinusoid and there's something going on here that only allows the, neg the positive portion of the sinusoid through and the bottom is chopped off. Well that's part of the rectifier action or the action of the, the diode that does that. So you can see here um, during the negative alternation there's nothing there. Okay, so you get this series of blips or pulses here by the action of the diode turning on and turning off. So <clears throat> we call that half wave rectification. So in part A in the diagram, a diode is connected to an AC source that provides the output voltage, the voltage in, and to a load resistor R sub L forming the half wave rectifier. Keep in mind that all ground symbols represent the same point electrically. So let's examine what happens during one cycle of the input voltage using the ideal model for the diode. When the sinusoidal input voltage goes positive, the diode is forward biased and conducts current through the load resistor as shown in part B. So if we scoot forward here, again back on it, so we've got B operation during the positive alternation. So we've got that portion right there, just from zero to the peak and back to zero. So what happens? Well, during this point, once the, once the voltage has exceeded the 0.7 required for the bias, the diode starts conducting. Okay, it's kicked into, into conduction mode and current starts to flow. So you can see the trace here follows the input with respect to time. So go back to the explanation here. So when the sinusoidal input voltage goes positive, the diode is forward biased and conducts current through the load resistor as we just saw. The current produces an output voltage then across the load which has the same shape as the positive half cycle of the input voltage. When the input voltage goes negative during the second half of its cycle the diode is reverse biased so there's no current. So the voltage across the load resistor then is zero as shown in C. The net result is that only the positive half cycles of the AC input voltage appear across the load. Since the output does not change polarity, it is a pulsating DC voltage on the output. So when we look at that, so again, halfway rectifier circuit, alternation only on the positive swing of the sinusoid, we get exactly that blip out alternation on the positive swing. When the sinusoidal input goes negative, we drive the diode into reverse bias, non-conducting, and what happens here is we get nothing out essentially because current is not allowed to flow. So what we get here then is a half wave output for in this case three alternations. So from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, nothing from 2 to 3, 
three to four, nothing, etc., etc. So this shows the half wave voltage with its with its average value indicated in the red below. So since we only have the alternating um, the alternating pulses on the positive swing during that time we have in essence uh, a, a integration a, a, the, the amount of, uh, of uh, summing that goes on for the area under the curve and the way to look at this is that if we were to take this and cut this into slices infinitely thin slices here and measure them for every positive part on this half you would have a, uh, a negative half on this part okay so all of this part here is in essence gets subtracted out and you end up with what looks kind of like a square wave here from here to here and then back to zero and here to here and so on and so on so that's your the averaging process that takes place so the average value then of the half wave rectifier output is the value you would measure on a DC voltmeter. It can be calculated using the following equation where V peak out is the peak value of the half wave rectified output. So if we can, if we can measure what the peak output should be divide it through by pi. Well, why do we pi? Well, because we're only going halfway. If we were going, if we were able to get a full 360 degrees or 2 pi out of this, we would divide by 2 pi. But since we only have good information or good DC in a half a cycle, we divide by pi. So that's why we, we, we go from 0 to pi and from pi to 2 pi there's nothing. So in this little example here what's the average DC value of the half wave rectified output voltage from the previous uh, figure? Well we have 100 volts and then nothing. So if we look at the relationship then the average is equal to the peak in this case 100 volts we divide that through by pi, so pull out your calculator, put in pi, invert it, multiply it times 100, and you get 31.8 volts. So 31.8 volts is the average value of that pulsating DC. Again, it's, it's kind of crude DC, but it's DC nonetheless because it's all in the positive range when you consider the alternations from zero <coughs> to the average. So what's the effect? What's the effect of that digital, uh, that diode barrier potential on the half wave? So we have, we have to take into account that that diode does not go into conduction until it reaches seven-tenths of a volt, okay? So in the previous discussion the diode was considered ideal. When the diode barrier potential is taken into account, as is the practical model in section 13.6, here is what happens. During the positive half cycle, the input voltage must overcome the barrier potential before the diode becomes forward biased. So it, the, the diode does not start conducting until this sinusoid comes up here somewhere and reaches the 7 tenths of a volt mark. This results in the diode then becoming forward biased. In a half wave, in the half wave output voltage with a peak value that of seven tenths less than the peak value of the input voltage. So we have to remove the seven tenths from the overall peak. So if this were a hundred volts at the peak, we'd subtract seven tenths from that. So your new output although the, the waveform looks the same as the input, it's going to be 7 tenths of a volt less. So when you work with diode circuits, it's often practical to neglect the effect of the barrier potential when the peak value of the applied voltage is much greater, i.e. 10 times greater than the, than the barrier 
potential. So if it's, you know, if, if, if we're looking at 100 volts in this case, then forget about the 7 tenths because it's going to be so small it will be meaningless. So if we look at this example, determine the peak output voltage and the average value of the output voltage of the rectifier. Well, in this case, we've got a 5 volt peak on the input. And so when we do the math on this, V peak then is equal to, V peak out is equal to V peak in minus 7 tenths. So 5 volts minus 7 tenths gives us 4.3. So that 7 tenths is relevant in this case. So once we get 4.3 as the peak output, then we can find out what the average is by taking that value, 4.3, dividing it through by pi, and we get 1.37 as the output voltage. So it does become significant for this small voltage. Because in this case, 7 tenths of a volt is almost 1 volt, so it is in fact significant. The peak inverse voltage, or the PIV, is the maximum, the maximum value of the reverse voltage, sometimes designated as peak inverse voltage. And it occurs at the peak of each negative alternation of the input cycle when the diode is in reverse bias. The condition is illustrated below. The peak inverse voltage then equals the peak value of the input voltage and the diode must be capable of withstanding this amount of repetitive reverse voltage. Remember we said early on that too much negative voltage, too much reverse bias can damage the, uh, the diode. So we need to make sure that when we're in the negative alternation we're not driving it so hard into reverse bias that we damage the, um, the diode. Okay, so that is everything so far for the half-wave rectifier. When we come back, we're going to find out what the configuration has to look at to turn this into a full-wave rectifier so that we get now a series of pulses without the negative part being cut off.